Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. We'll call the meeting uh, to order and welcome. I see we've got some guests with us today, and all will become clear in a little while about that. But first, we'll call the meeting, the public meeting of October 22nd, 2013, to order. Uh, and before we get into any business at all, I'm going to uh, pass along uh, for everybody's information here a quick little update on Councillor Stoyles, who will not be uh, joining us today. Uh, most are aware, certainly here in this chamber, Councillor Stoyles and her husband uh, suffered an automobile accident on Thanksgiving weekend. They both ended up in hospital for a while. Uh, I am delighted to be able to report that they are both at home, uh, having spent about a week in the hospital. Uh, but Councillor Stoyles will be uh, out of commission, we'll call it, uh, for the next four to six weeks. Now, knowing Lucy, I'm saying the next four to six days, uh, but we all know that, that I'm probably more right than wrong. Uh, however, they were very fortunate. They, uh, their, their car did leave the highway. Um, the, the vehicle was pretty well written off. Uh, they both suffered uh, rib injuries in particular, a lot of bruises, lacerations, things of that nature. But I'm delighted to say that they are anticipated full recovery for both. Uh, and that is, that is its own blessing, our prayers and thoughts with her uh, and her husband and the family because they're going through a little bit of a trying time, as you can appreciate with all of this. Uh, so I, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm wondering how they're going to keep Lucy down on the farm, but it'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so anyway, with that, uh, we will now call the meeting officially to order. Uh, the first item would be acceptance of the agenda as it's presented, moved by Councillor Ledwell, seconded by uh, the Deputy Mayor. Uh, are there any uh, additions to the agenda? Okay, and both of those are not now in the uh, actual document, or they are? In the drop box. They're those separate documents in the drop box itself. Okay, uh, thank you. There is also something uh, on the water level today, both that I'll do later. It's under other business. Fine. Okay, that's fine. You can do that there, or certainly with your Public Works Committee reports, up to you. All right, uh, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Motion is carried. We'll begin then with the meeting uh, minutes of the action report of the public meeting of October 8th. Uh, and I will entertain a motion to accept that as presented. Moved by Councillor Tessier, seconded by Councillor Aker. Uh, are there any errors or omissions to be reported from the public council meeting of October 8th? Errors or omissions only. Hearing none, call the question. All in favor? Contrary minded, motion is carried. Business arising from the public council meeting of October 8th, and if there are any, please refer to the agenda item number attached. Uh, items? coming back as business arising from the meeting of October 8th. Going once, going twice. We are moving on, that being the case. Uh, Council, the next item will be proclamations and uh, presentations. And today we have a, a number of proclamations. And why they're not coming up here, I don't know, but okay. We have a number of proclamations. We are going to start with two that we are going to sign into the record today. Uh, for which we do not have speakers. One is a proclamation that we signed last year, uh, and we were honored to do so, and we've been asked to do it again this year. And so uh, Council has agreed to the, that. This is in uh, recognizing Electromagnetic Hypersensitivity Awareness Month for the month of November, and the proclamation reads as follows. Whereas people of all ages throughout the world have developed the illness of electromagnetic hypersensitivity as a result of global electromagnetic pollution, and whereas electromagnetic hypersensitivity is a painful chronic illness of hypersensitive reactions to electromagnetic radiations for which there is no known cure, and whereas electromagnetic hypersensitivity is recognized by the Canadian Human Rights Commission, the Canadian government, as an environmental sensitivity, and whereas power lines and transformers generate electromagnetic fields and may be contributing to electrical sensitivity, and whereas this illness may be preventable through the reduction or avoidance of electromagnetic radiation in both indoor and outdoor environments and by further medical research. Now, therefore, I, Randy Sims, Mayor of the City of Mount Pearl, hereby proclaim the month of November 2013 as Electromagnetic Hypersensitivity Awareness Month. That is a mouthful, isn't it? Uh, to which I shall affix my signature. There is obviously a, a really an ongoing debate about the impact of electromagnetic fields and uh, what they do to the human body. Uh, this is a body of science that's uh, just coming into its own, quite frankly, 
uh, and we were asked to do this last year, and I recall we had a representative here to speak. Uh, so we are, we are honored to do it again this year. Uh, the second uh, proclamation that I wish to read into the record today uh, deals with Waste Reduction Week in Canada, and it reads as follows. The City of Mount Pearl hereby recognizes Waste Reduction Week in Canada. As a municipality, we are committed to conserving resources, protecting the environment, and educating the community. We recognize the generation of solid waste and the needless waste of water and energy resources as global environmental problems and endeavor to take the lead in our community toward environmental sustainability. We have declared October 21st through to the 27th as Waste Reduction Week in the City of Mount Pearl, to which I shall again affix a signature. And uh, we don't have anyone here to address that with us this afternoon uh, as well. The third proclamation that we have today, there is a gentleman here that's uh, going to speak with us for a moment. Uh, the gentleman down there looking at us with a smile on his face, that's Mr. Lloyd Hobbs, Council, and he is the manager of, of Traffic Safety, Safety Services, Newfoundland and Labrador. Lloyd, why don't you come on up here, and, and I'm going to uh, read this into the record, uh, sign it, and then I'm going to invite you to uh, say a few words and address Council, if you would. Is that okay? <clears throat> okay. Uh, Council, this is in reference to National Teen Driver Safety Week, and it reads as follows, whereas driving is an important and exciting rite of passage for youth, it is also one of the riskiest activities for young people to engage in. And whereas teen driver safety is a significant issue in Canada, because young people only make up 13% of licensed drivers, but they represent one quarter of all road-related injuries and fatalities. Didn't know that. Whereas National Teen Driver Safety Week is a week dedicated to raising awareness and seeking solutions to preventable teen deaths on the road across Canada, everyone has a role to play in creating change amongst their peers, in classrooms, and in their communities. Now, therefore, I, Randy Sims, Mayor of the City of Mount Pearl, do hereby proclaim October 20th to 26th as National Teen Driver Safety Week in the City of Mount Pearl, to which... I shall affix this signature, and I am going to invite Mr. Hobbs, if you would, you can use this microphone, uh, to address Council and tell us some of your plans. Thank you, Your Worship and uh, Councillors. Uh, I apologize uh, to Ms. Lewis for the lateness of the request getting here. In fact, it was through Councillor Stoyles that I had made initial uh, uh, approach to Council, and I hadn't heard back from her, and I hadn't heard back from her, and it was not until the last minute that I uh, knew of her uh, circumstance. Uh, but thank you for, uh, for uh, fitting this into your agenda at such short notice. Uh, as many of you will probably know, that trauma is the number one cause of death and the leading cause of life impairment for youth. And at my age, I can include youth up to age 40. <laughs> so in youth 40 and younger, it's the leading cause of death. And as was read in the proclamation, youth are grossly overrepresented in traffic collisions and deaths in that statistic. And uh, Safety Services Newfoundland Labrador, uh, whom I work with, is the provincial coordinating organization for Parachute. Parachute is a national organization. It's actually an umbrella organization to address uh, risky behavior among youth, and risky behavior can be anything from skateboarding to parachuting to whatever you want to think in terms of lifestyle issues. And you, you cannot remove risk from your life, but the idea behind Parachute and all of its outshoots, including this particular week for focusing on driver safety for teens, is that you need to be able to recognize and you need to be able to deal with risk so you minimize any negative effects from it. And uh, you, sir, are the most easterly person in the country to have proclaimed this for us, mm. and we thank you. Uh, we came to you because Safety Service in Newfoundland Labrador is a resident of the city, mm -hmm. and we thought it would be appropriate to come here. And second, uh, of course, uh, at the same time, I think with the time difference, the same time that you are proclaiming this here, this afternoon in Ottawa, there is a national uh, unveiling of the week as well. So I thank you for uh, councillors and you, sir, 
for uh, uh, being part of this with us. And as parents or as uh, family members, uh, if you could spread the word about uh, teens being safe when on the road, we would appreciate it. Uh, safety is everybody's business, and uh, we're only as safe as those around us. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Hobbs, very much. A question from the Deputy Mayor. Just wondering, are there any specific initiatives? Like I teach in a high school, and you know, the kids, as you said, it's a rite of passage, and they're excited about getting yes. their license. Anything in particular that's going into the schools uh, or the there, high schools? There is nothing particular going into the schools with this particular week. Uh, throughout the year, there are a number of campaigns we do uh, through the media uh, in terms of uh, teen safety. Uh, and uh, organizations like ours, which uh, part of our bread and butter comes from teaching young people to drive, uh, we do focus on uh, the elements of safety with them. Mm -hmm. But certainly, uh, I will say to you, if any, any school would like us to come in and do something related to safety, we would be more than willing. We do that on a regular basis uh, with, uh, with our students everywhere from primary all the way up to senior high. Okay. But I, thank I, you, sir. I appreciate your interest. Mr. Hobbs, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We appreciate uh, uh, your activities and your work, and uh, we recognize as well the value of yeah, thank you. Of continuing to draw attention to uh, that particular reality, which I, I have to say I find disturbing. One quarter of all of the accidents, 13% of drivers. Uh, it goes to, um, it, it points directly to an attitude of infallibility that seems to exist when you're young. Trust me, it fades when you age. No, that, there's no doubt. Thank you for that. Council, we're going to do uh, something a little unique uh, in the way of presentations today. We're going to make a presentation to one of our own. Uh, and I uh, want to pass on this information to Council. Uh, this is a recognition uh, from a patron of our swimming pool. Uh, a patron of the pool who uh, at this point refers to remain anonymous. I uh, would like to recognize two valued employees of our organization, April Kenny and Jeffrey Weber. And April is not with us today, but Jeffrey is. And I'm going to uh, provide you uh, why, uh, in uh, this patron's own words, what he had to say about these employees and what happened. He writes, Yes, they are employees of the city, and yes, part of their training is about saving lives. However, these two individuals did everything right, asking all the correct questions and making the right decisions that contributed to saving my life. Early morning swim at Mount Pearl Pool, Wednesday, October 2nd. I'd finished a workout when a pain was felt in the left shoulder. I assumed it was a muscular pain. Got out of the pool, not feeling well, still thinking I was having a muscular pain. I alerted lifeguards of my weakness. Both guards asked about my feelings of weakness, already implementing their action plan. On his first visit, Jeff asked me all the right questions surrounding my current state and my previous health issues. He recommended that they call an ambulance based on what he was already seeing. He took my home number for April to contact my wife. April called my home, ensured my wife not to panic, and let her know that I was not feeling well and that because of their assessment they were going to call an ambulance simply as a precaution. Jeff kept assuring me I'd be fine and once again asked my permission to call an ambulance. Thankfully, neither April nor he listened to me uh, that I would be fine. Jeff stayed with me the whole time, ensuring my comfort. Within minutes, the ambulance arrived, which amazed me. April and Jeff had already had them dispatched. I was transported via ambulance to the Health Sciences Center, where I was rushed to an emergency and immediately had a procedure to clear one of the three main arteries of my heart. While the emergency staff, cath lab staff, and coronary care deserve a great deal of credit, the fact remains that I am convinced that both Jeff and April, who were my first responders, did so much more than others would have thought of that morning, which contributed to my being alive today. They deserve every bit of recognition the city can give them. I will never forget that morning or them. What do you think? And... So, Jeff, if you would, I'm going to get you to come up here. I have a little something to give you today. Uh, this particular gentleman says you should uh, receive all of the recognition that we could give you, so we're doing that right here, or hoping, or hoping we can, Jeff. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a tremendous example of uh, employees doing uh, what they, they're expected to do, but above and beyond uh, the call of duty. I want you to know that your immediate supervisor, your staff, 
their managers, the directors of uh, the city itself, all felt, including Mr. Collins in particular here, the big boss, we'll say, in that department, all felt that you were worthy of uh, our heartfelt thanks for a job well done, uh, worthy of some uh, valued recognition. And so with that, if I still have it, Jeff Weber, both for you and April, who couldn't join us today, a little token of appreciation from your fellow employees, from the management and staff, and the City Council of the City of Mount Pearl, who are proud to say this young man is one of our employees. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I think it's marvelous. I want to do... I don't want you to have to be saving lives all the time, though. You know, but it just goes to show that our people are being trained well, and they're executing that training well, doing the things that they need to do, and doing it without a panic, without a rush, doing it properly. And that you have someone saying, I attribute the fact that I am well today as a result of their calm, collected approach to the problem that he expressed. I think we as community leaders, we have to be nothing but absolutely proud uh, of that and proud of the people who did it. Thank you, Jeff. And we regret that April couldn't be with us today, but uh, her little reward and appreciation will be shown to her uh, as soon as we get the opportunity to do so. So thank you for that. Anybody with a comment or a thought? No, just to be absolutely. Yeah. Nothing much rattles him. No. No, we are actually going to let him go. It's, 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 we, 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 yeah, there's only so much you can do here. That uh, all right? Uh, I got to start this thing over. Technology kills me, you know. Thank you, everybody, very much. Okay, uh, we have no correspondence that we're going to report today, so we're moving on to uh, committees. And as we know, committees have not yet changed in our organization. Um, so uh, our very first one is Public Works. Councillor Walsh, the floor, sir, is going to be yours. Thank you very much, uh, Your Worship. And uh, it's, it's not too often that I have a presentation with an empty chair to my left, so I'm, I'm delighted that you acknowledge Councillor Stoyles, and certainly we all miss her uh, at the table. And But we're delighted, as you said, that she's doing so well. Um, on a more somber note, if you can get more somber than that, we're delighted that Lucy is doing well, but the cremation of pets. <laughs> How exciting can public works get at times? Um, Your Worship, we have a, we have a standing offer uh, with uh, Devonshire uh, Pet uh, Services. Uh, they take care of uh, sometimes euthanization of animals, which is very uh, unusual these days, in fact. Last year, I don't think we had a single um, dog, at least, that had to be euthanized. Uh, but we did have a couple of cats that were ill and eventually had to be put down. And when we do that, we generally bring them to Devonshire for cremation. The, the, uh, there has been a slight increase in the cost of their services, $5 extra for cats and 12 for dogs. We do need a, a motion of council to have this approved, and I so move. Moved by Councillor Wall, seconded by Councillor Tessier. It's, we have a council full of pun makers. Yeah, we won't and go so there. And so we're just not going to do it today. <laughs> all right. Because I can see it all rolling around in your heads. Ledger will got a half a dozen he'll throw at you now. I'm surprised the deputy mayor hasn't said it and, and, and the deputy mayor, I mean, he would just love to, to do some puns on this. I can't do puns. I get, you know, so, I, see, he started already. You know what's interesting is I don't think most people would even realize that we actually take care of that as a city. That, that's something that we have to do. Yeah. We are going to call the question. All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion carried. In saying that, uh, Your Worship, you know, uh, I, it's probably a great opportunity to, uh, to acknowledge uh, the, the, the reason that we don't have to do as much of this sort of thing uh, as we had done in the past is because of some of the tremendous organizations like Beagle Paws and Heavenly Creatures, and it might be, a, and the SPCA, of course, it might be a great opportunity for us to just uh, provide some uh, kudos to these organizations Amen for the to work that. they do. When we have animals in our care, we very quickly contact these various organizations, and uh, I have to say, they quickly respond and uh, find suitable homes for the animals, whether they be cats or dogs, uh, and uh, it's, it's just a tremendous and free service uh, that, uh, that has enabled us to, uh, to significantly reduce any amount of uh, prolonged care, or protracted care that we have to provide for the animals, so mm -hmm. it's just great that, uh, that these organizations are, there are so active. Um, 
On some uh, better news and a little lighter topic, we did uh, purchase and are in receipt of a, a new water fountain, which we're going to be placing on the lower pond in Powers Pond. Now, this is a, a motorized fountain and, of course, is, is a lighted fountain. Because of the late season in which we uh, accepted receipt of this, uh, we're going to wait until the spring. Uh, uh, our director of public works, Jerry Antle, is known to be a bit of an excitable guy, but the guy who's most, most excited about this water fountain is Eric Arsenal, I think. He's really uh, ecstatic that we have this, and I think it will be a tremendous Okay, asset. I'm just curious. Why? Why? Uh, why would Eric be so excited? Because he just is. Uh, I asked the same thing of our director quite often, <laughs> but they're, they're just excitable. Well, he just wants to see it done and thought it was a great idea. And I believe it's a great idea. It is idea a great idea. And will be a tremendous asset to that particular facility. But I don't know why he's so excited about it. He just is. He's got his, he's got his little arm float. He's all ready. He's going to go home. Absolutely. Or something like that. I guess, I guess, well, we feed, I guess we feed the ducks. The least we can do is shower the ducks. We can I don't shower know. We don't need a motion for this, uh, Your Worship. No. We're just bringing that forward for yep. the information of council. That's wonderful. Um, we are, we have all been aware and involved, we're involved actually in the opening of the dog park. The dog park, I have to say, in Mount Pearl, for residents who have, may have not, may not have seen it yet, it's located, um, uh, on our walking trail at the very end of our walking trail in Power Spawn, actually, and is accessible through uh, the business park at Donovan's, just down from the depot next to British Confectionery, I think is the actual entrance. Um, this dog park has been very, very well utilized uh, by, by not just residents of Mount Pearl, but I think because of the, uh, the, the park itself and the amenities that are there and the actual natural beauty of the park, I think people are coming from everywhere to actually use the park, and, and I'm not saying that in any kind of an exaggerated way. Um, it is a lighter park, there is water, there is a, a division between the park for smaller dogs and larger animals, uh, and it's been really, really well utilized. We're delighted for that. But of course, as we approach winter, uh, we're about to scale back operations at the park. We don't actually close the park, uh, but what we do um, is allow the park to be used depending on the, again, snowfall, and uh, we don't clear snow at the entrance or anything of that nature because, of course, some of the amenities at the park, like the water, uh, has to be turned off during the winter time. Uh, we will be erecting signage that users of the park will use the park at their own risk. Uh, while it's not officially closed, uh, it is dependent on the conditions, and signage will uh, address some of those concerns. Mm -hmm. There is one concern that I want to highlight now, particularly for users of the park. We have traditionally, and will continue uh, to do so in the future, used uh, the part of the parking lot of the dog park for a snow dump uh, in the wintertime. And uh, as much as we don't want to be thinking about and planning for snow, uh, it is a reality in our climate. And uh, what we're planning to do here now, as an interim measure at least, is erect some barricades uh, uh, along the access to the snow dump. Uh, parking area will be delineated with concrete barriers uh, that will uh, direct uh, traffic for the dog park uh, on the right, and of course our heavy equipment that will use the other side of the parking lot as a snow dump uh, will go to the left of that. We'll look at some other things uh, in the spring of next year. Uh, maybe community services and public works will get together and talk about a more permanent solution, uh, which may be in fact more a little, a little more aesthetically pleasing, but for now we want to you know, uppermost in our minds, of course, is the safety of the users and the heavy equipment that goes back and forth there. So uh, that's the, the message, again, is just for the information of residents, particularly those who use the dog park, and for the information of council as well. Okay, uh, the next item, Your Worship, is a, a Recycle My Cell program. We've, uh, we've gotten some correspondence from the, the Wireless Communication uh, uh, Network of, of Canada. Uh, and, of course, uh, Canadian Wireless Telecommunications Association is the correct term, CWTA. Uh, and obviously there's a concern uh, at a number of levels uh, of uh, the fact that many cell phones end up in, in our waste uh, facilities. Uh, there is a registration form that was provided uh, with the information package that we received from CWTA. And what we thought we'd do uh, is actually register uh, here in Mount Pearl and have a number of sites uh, identified where people can actually come, for example, here at City Hall or at the depot or some other locations at the pool or whatever, where we could have some uh, receptacles and people could actually just 
drop their cell phones. That way they would be uh, kept out of the landfill and of course there are clear instructions at what, as to what should or shouldn't be done uh, in, in uh, getting rid of these cell phones. The other option, of course, is people can bring these back to their wireless cell phone providers and they generally will uh, get rid of the phones uh, in, in an appropriate fashion as well. So what we're going to do is with the uh, support of council, and again, I don't think we need a, uh, a motion for this. Uh, I think what we're going to do is register uh, as a, an official uh, affiliate with CWTA and to go through the motion of having the drop-offs, and I think that would be a great addition and, and service to our residents uh, have some locations identified where these cells mm -hmm. can be dropped. Um, the next uh, item, uh, Your Worship, is a little bit of an update in terms of public works. Um, in the last few weeks, although this time of the year we're normally scaling down operations in our parks, and that has been the case in the last few weeks uh, with us as well, uh, but we also took advantage of the opportunity to, to erect some new playground equipment. Some equipment in tot lots and playgrounds were installed uh, in the last uh, few weeks. In fact, I think Council may have, did you receive some pictures on those as well? Uh, they are sharp, and, and uh, thanks very much again to the, to the director and to our staff for erecting those. Uh, on the road side of things, we are continuing to uh, carry out repairs on roads, install guardrails and, and reflectors. Uh, this time of the year, we also check things like hydrants to make sure that the markers are installed on the hydrants, et cetera. So we're gearing up for the winter season. Uh, and when is it, uh, Mr. Randall, that there are crews actually come on for our seasonal operators? Do you know offhand? Generally late November. So we're, we're heading in that direction. Hopefully the snow will stay away for a little bit longer and we'll be able to, to move forward uh, with that. Your Worship, can I just ask one question? Yes, yeah, sure. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. With respect to the roads there, Councillor Walsh, I noticed you mentioned about the asphalt uh, repairs are ongoing. Uh, until what time will, will that continue? Um, I raise this because uh, uh, several residents, probably five or six now, have asked me if, we, if I could question the, uh, the repair along Commonwealth Avenue there by the, uh, by the mall there where uh, yeah, Around the World is and Dougie's is and those places right there. I mean, that's been, you know, I know we had a water main leak. I explained to them last year, and there was some settling that took place, and it had to be an immediate repair done. But uh, they're hoping that's going to be, you know, done by, by winter. So I said I would ask it tonight just to see if we can get an update for them publicly. Yeah, that, any information? Uh, Deputy Mayor, it's, uh, it's an appropriate time to ask the question. That repair actually was undertaken today. Oh, good stuff. So it's, uh, it wasn't planned that way. It just became a repair that we actually completed today. Uh, we, will, we will continue with asphalt repairs for about the next three to four weeks as long as weather is pending and the asphalt plants remain open. So we are continuing. So we could get another month out of it. Okay. Yeah, depending on the weather. Um, <coughs> you know, it's hard to get ahead of this guy, isn't it? Well, you, know, you know, you ask a question and he had it done today. You know, what, what, what can you say? Um, there are a number of uh, areas, though, seriously, that, uh, throughout the city where we've had to do digs, and there have been uh, there have been temporary replacements uh, of of uh, asphalt that are slowly uh, but surely being uh, addressed over the next few weeks. And for as long as the snow stays away and the asphalt plants are operating, we'll continue to to be doing work on that. Um, Your Worship. Um, we have now gone through just about a full season with the automatic garbage uh, system, and I just want to give you a very quick update. It was a timely time to do it. We uh, had a, a meeting last week, and this was a major uh, discussion at the uh, committee table, and I thought it would be an appropriate time to bring uh, council up to speed as to where we are. As you know, we distributed 9,600 carts throughout the uh, city, uh, and uh, in total, we obviously at the beginning especially we had a number of different requests and inquiries and a couple of complaints as you might expect uh, at the very front end of people um, receiving these carts and, and being asked to utilize the carts for the, the garbage uh, system. But even with those in total that represented less than 1% of the 9600. In other words we had much fewer than a hundred, um, I think it was actually 75 or 76 uh, calls or issues or concerns or inquiries about the uh, complaint. Just want to let you know that each complaint was dealt with individually uh, and uh, was resolved uh, one way or another to the satisfaction of everyone. We did have um, a couple of uh, calls, in fact I think there were a dozen in total of carts that were missing. Uh, and what we've done in situations like that, it's kind of interesting because, again, 
we had a fairly protracted discussion on that on, on Friday. Uh, what we normally do, uh, each cart is actually assigned to a resident, and there is a bin number that's attached to that. We, we normally will make the uh, residents aware of that, because quite often they're not aware that the cart actually is assigned to a particular property, and we can track that. So we give them the bin number for the property. We suggest that they go next door and check with neighbors uh, on either side of them or perhaps across the street, because sometimes if the cart is empty, depending on the conditions, it's possible that the cart could have been blown or could have been moved by children playing in the area. Um, there are any number of reasons where carts might not be where they were left when they were set at the curb. Uh, on occasion, people are not entirely comfortable checking other people's property or going on their neighbor's property, in which case we normally send our own forces out. Sometimes it's either been uh, public works employees or sometimes it's been uh, municipal enforcement, people that have gone and visited. And, and uh, almost without fail, I say almost without fail, in nine of those 12 times, we've actually found the cart. It was two or three doors down, it was wheeled in. I don't know how somebody can actually wheel in two carts and not realize that they have two carts, but uh, it, it does happen. So we've really had no issues, uh, you know, realistically no issues with the, with the carts. Uh, we did have three situations um, whereby the carts were missing. We were not able to find them or locate them. The, the owners was not able to find them or, lo or locate them. And, and in such cases, the owners, in all three cases, came in and purchased a new cart. Uh, we, we charged the full rate uh, for the cart because, of course, it is a replacement. Uh, but again, that's three times out of 9,600 carts, which is a pretty uh, good track rec record. So I just wanted to uh, bring Council up to speed on that. The, the carts are working extremely well. And we're delighted with both the value and the operation. And of course, the operators themselves, more and more of them are becoming better at operating the equipment. Uh, we've had very little damage, particularly of late. Um, and, uh, you know, we're just thrilled with the operation of the carts in winter and in summer. Uh, they've, they've really performed extremely well. So uh, I thought we'd take the opportunity to update the council on that. And I think uh, that's it for me. I have a comment there, okay. Worship. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. On the carts. <clears throat> Uh, firstly, going door to door, uh, many, many people said, at first they thought we were crazy, you know, and we brought in these carts and they thought they were the worst thing, but they were all converts. They think they're the greatest service that the city provides. They're delighted with, with how clean they are and the absence of birds and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, we did receive uh, many, many compliments on the decision to do that. But I just wanted to highlight, uh, Councillor Walsh, because I know you mentioned this at a previous meeting as well. Uh, that it is okay for residents to actually identify their cart, to write, like I have my address written on my, on my cart, on the lid and on the four sides. So anybody who finds my cart knows it belongs to my household. So uh, just, uh, I know you mentioned it earlier, but I figured we'd just uh, reiterate that in case uh, residents are wondering if they can identify their, their cart. Oh, sure, write, your, write the name of the, write the address on them. Absolutely. I've got it done on mine. Absolutely. And then that'll help in, in case they do get blown down the street or picked up incorrect, at least we know where the house is, you know? Yeah. That's a, a great idea, and I'm glad you mentioned it, Deputy Mayor. I'm not surprised that your car is marked, because I think every single one of your signs was marked. This is true. If I'm not mistaken. Thanks to my uh, wife. Well, thanks to your wife, yes. Um, but actually, uh, it would be more helpful if it was actually uh, marked with the, uh, well, I think that's what you did, with the ad physical address of your house. Yes. Now, yes. Because some. Because, yeah, because the uh, cart actually stays with the address. If somebody moves, you should technically leave the cart, and that cart stays with that address. Uh, so that would be really helpful. That way, if there is uh, a problem with the cart, people can look at it quite easily. I know I have mine marked underneath the, the cover, right. underneath the lid, and, and uh, they can be found more easily. Thanks for mentioning that. Okay, moving on. Community Services Committee report. Councillor Paula Tessier. Or Tessier, what do we say today? Tessier. We're not You're a that, Tessier, We're eh? not that fancy. Uh, Councilor Aker just informs me that you can get white permanent markers. That's what I've used. Who knew? That's what's on mine. I had no idea. Uh, short agenda this week, Your Worship. Uh, first of all, we want to acknowledge the Community Services Department for a very successful Oktoberfest craft fair at the Reed Center last Monday. There was 44 crafters selling their crafts, and approximately 1,700 people went through the doors last Monday, which is outstanding, and about 200, well, more than 200 children. And of course, it should be noted, there was a little craft room off uh, to the side for the, for the little children to go in and, and uh, take advantage of, uh, of opportunities in there as well and be creative themselves. 
So we want to thank everybody who participated and assisted with this annual event, and especially the community services staff. It's a, it's a great success, and with 1,700 people going through uh, in that, on that day, I think that that is definitely a great example of something that people do look forward mm -hmm. to on an annual basis. Uh, and to that effect, this is uh, a big deal. Christmas at the Glacier is October 23rd to the 27th of this year. It's, uh, it is, of course, at the Glacier. Anybody who has any or who wants any information can call 745-9627 or visit christmasattheglacier.com. And we all know that that is a very, very popular event. Uh, for the duration of the time that it's there, uh, very, very many booths. I mean, the glacier is going to be filled up. I'm not sure if both sides will be filled, but one side will definitely be filled. Uh, and it's outstanding. Great place to go do some Christmas shopping. So we look forward to seeing a lot of people there. Um, on Monday, November the 11th, the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 36 here in Mount Pearl is going to pay tribute to all of those who fought to preserve the values that we hold so dear as a city and province and as a country with their parade and wreath laying ceremony. The parade is going to travel from the Church of the Ascension on Smallwood Drive at 10 o'clock it starts uh, under the direction of course of our municipal enforcement and it's going to come east uh, on Park Avenue to Worrell Crescent uh, and the ceremony then will commence in front of the Cenotaph at 1055. Of course this is uh, extended for the information of all of the general public. We'd like to see as very many people as possible there despite even if the weather is poor. Uh, I think this is one of those situations where you put on your hat, your gloves, you buckle up and you go out and you uh, certainly pay tribute to the people who fought to give you the opportunity to put on your hat, gloves and go out and brave the cold for an hour or so uh, because this is an extremely worthwhile and very, very important event in our city. It really has. It really has been growing over the past couple of years. Uh, it's wonderful to see and it's wonderful to see a lot of young people mm -hmm. coming and paying tribute to uh, battles that have been fought. I know that the schools have done a great job, uh, particularly in recent years, of highlighting what's been done and how people fought. I know that last year our own uh, G. Fred G. Bannister went into one of the schools and actually told his story and he was profiled and I think that they had some pictures from when he actually served. And Mr. Bannister, as we all know, is going to be, I think, 95 in a couple of weeks. Um, and so to look back at somebody who has had those experiences and who's living amongst us in our community. I think it's very, very important. And it's a very, very critical message to give to the young people, particularly. Uh, and now Remembrance Day on Monday, November the 11th, the Remembrance Run. It's an 11K run. It's starting at 8 o'clock on the T railway sections in Mount Pearl, starting at the trail intersection on Commonwealth Avenue across from Pipers. Again, our municipal enforcement, the RNC, St. John Ambulance, and Rover Search and Rescue are going to be on hand to help out. It's a two hour run time limit. 8K or 11K in two hours. Should take me two days. Yeah. Stop, have lunch, have supper. My goodness. Anyway, what's that? Have a mug go. And a nap. And a nap. Anyway, that's happening in Mount Pearl as well on Monday, November the 11th, and that's for the information of council and the general public as well. And that's it for community services. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor De Councillor, well, Deputy Mayor Jim Locke. Which one of you is going to do this? Because the deputy mayor was absent, but you're going to rock and roll, Jim. I'll rock and roll. Okay, sure. sir. Uh, the first your worship has to do with the How's multi. The back? Well, I was going to say like earlier. You're suffering. Do you yeah. want to sit down? No, I'm okay. I was going to say earlier. I have uh, Councilor Tessier's back. I say that many times, but literally, I think I have her back this time because, <laughs> because uh, he's got your bad back. You know, well, we're, we're both uh, suffering from some from some uh, lower well, back pain. Mine, mine is mine is out now as well, so it's. We're a little slow moving yes. on this side of the Well, table. thank God the mayor is healthy. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. <laughs> the walking wounded over here on this back side, Your Worship. Yeah. Uh, back to back reports. And the puns begin. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, back off. Good. Yeah, back off. Uh, Your Worship, the first one has to do with our multiplex, and it's coming along quite nicely. I know Councillor Ledwell will speak to this in, in his report. Uh, we're now seeking approval from council to borrow the first portion of the uh, required financing yes, just a for money. a new RecPlex. Not uh, a big lot. Coming in at $37 million will, when it's all said and done. So the first borrowing is going to be in the amount of $15 million. And then once uh, we get council approval for this, the city will then request approval of the Minister of Municipal Affairs to proceed with this borrowing. Of course, this is in accordance with uh, Section 117 of the City of Mount Pearl Act. One specific proposal for the financing terms have been received and evaluated. The results, of course, along with recommendations, will be tabled for Council to review, evaluate, and then ultimately approve. 
Uh, so committee is recommending approval to go ahead and start the process to borrow for the construction of the uh, multiplex. Again, the first of three portions, and the amount is $15 million, and I so move. Moved and seconded by Councillor Aker. Question or comment? Do I actually get to sign off, off on a thing that's got the words $15 million written on it? Really? Wow. Wow. I want a copy of that for my grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion is carried. Uh, the next item here, Your Worship, is a memorandum of understanding with respect to uh, the regional fire services, and I'm going to uh, defer that. Councillor Walsh is going to speak to this in a little bit. I, so. I can do it at the end. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'll, uh, I just wanted to mention it here. It did come up at our committee, but given that Councillor Walsh is the uh, co chair on the regional fire uh, committee, uh, he'll, he will speak to it. Well, later. there is a motion here, so he's going to ask for that motion and yes. not you? Yeah, he will okay. ask for the motion. Fine. Okay. Uh, the next, Your Worship, is. Uh, um, a sponsorship uh, for the municipalities Newfoundland and Labrador annual convention uh, this year is being held in the city of St. John's and we're recommending approval to provide the sponsorship uh, for a nutrition break in the amount of $5,000 for this year's M&L convention and I so move. Uh, it is moved and seconded. It, it is, by the way, not just a nutrition break. It's all of them. All nutrition breaks. Okay. Yeah. I, do, I do know your worship. It says here name tags yeah, in, our, no, in our kit. No, we got beat but, to that. Uh, someone, someone Paradise, beat, sponsor, Paradise so. beat us. Okay. Simple as that. All right. They beat us out. Dan, the, Dan, the new mayor, Bob, it will be pleased. Absolutely. There you go. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. And the last item for our committee, your worship, are the invoices for council approval. We have 13 outlined there. Uh, this time smaller than last, $338,227.50. And I move that the amount be accepted as presented. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Contrary minded. And the motion is carried. And that's it for me, Your Worship. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, economic development, if we could. Councillor Walsh. Uh, maybe before I do the economic development, I'll just do the uh, ratification of the motion. If you wish, for, yes. Uh, sure, I just, absolutely. Uh, just a little preamble for that, Your Worship. We've been working for the last, I guess, almost a year uh, with the Town of Paradise. Uh, they've been doing some exploratory work and research as to where uh, they might get, I guess, for lack of a better word, the best bang for the buck for fire services. Uh, they were looking at a partnership with the Town of CBS. They were looking at St. John's Regional Fire Department. Uh, at the end of it all, uh, we had meetings with them, and uh, I think they met with other groups. Uh, the issues were, were, were really twofold. Uh, the uh, town of Paradise was providing a con were providing uh, regional fire with a contracted fee of about seven hundred thousand dollars or so for the service, whereas full partnership in regional fire probably costs in the million. In fact, not probably it does cost in excess of uh, three million dollars annually. Uh, the rub from Paradise's perspective was even though they were they were paying for the service, they didn't actually have uh, a fire station located within the boundaries uh, of the town of Paradise. So uh, to sort of rectify that uh, and also to make the town of Paradise uh, a full partner in regional fire services, uh, there was a, uh, some terms and conditions developed and a memorandum of understanding was eventually uh, agreed upon and presented and signed. Uh, Sometime during September, I forget the exact date, but I represented the uh, city of Mount Pearl, and I think Councillor uh, uh, Danny Breen represented the city of St. John's. This new partnership, uh, Your Worship, and members of council will allow for an expanded regional fire services, uh, and of course will uh, mean that the town of Paradise will get a brand new fire hall that will be uh, that will have personnel there 24/7, and that will be a, a tremendous addition not only to the town of Paradise but also to the regional fire service in general. So we're delighted that the partnership has been finalized, the MMOU has been signed. Now we're seeking, as did the City of St. John's, the ratification of that motion from Council because it is a change in the governance structure and the operational agreement of the regional fire service. And so I'd like to make that uh, motion to Council uh, and I think would be well served uh, with its approval. So I so move. Uh, moved by Councillor Wall, seconded by Councillor Aker. Questions or comments? All those in favor, contrary minded, motion is carried. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Now I'll get to the notice of motion, and in keeping with notice of motions, there is no discussion or debate on this, so I'll just read it as it is. In accordance with Section 39 of the City of Mount Pearl Act 1988, take notice that in accordance with Council's public notification policy, I will, at a regular meeting of Council, move an amendment to the text of the Mount Pearl Development Regulations 
2010 that, if enacted, will in Section 11.12 Use Zone Schedules, Commercial General uh, Use Zone, under Subsection 11.12.1, delete hotel uh, subject to Regulations 11.11.10 and replace with hotel subject to Regulation 11.12.10. The purpose of this amendment is simply to correct an incorrect reference within the text of the CG use zone, uh, and this is dated the 22nd of October 2013. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Thank you, sir. Engineering Services, Councillor Ledwell. Thank you, Your Worship. We have two items on our, <clears throat> on our agenda this evening, and we begin with some good news with regards to our multiplex. Uh, the project is currently about 72% complete, so we're uh, certainly getting there. I'm delighted to report that uh, we've been doing some testing in the, the pool area. We've had some water in the main pool, and the main pool part of the project has now passed its testing, so uh, that's great news. And currently we're now testing the lap pool, so uh, we're moving to the smaller parts of the, uh, the aquatics uh, part of the facility, so that's great news. Also, of course, with the, the winter months coming on and as we're nearing completion of the project, uh, we're now uh, getting ready to close in the building. We're getting ready to turn on some heat and, and turn on the main power source. So what you're going to see now is more of the interior workings that are going to be happening with the multiplex. So uh, that's great news. The, the building, the outside of it is pretty well framed in now, and uh, the project moves into the interior stages as we speak. So uh, it is very much on budget and on schedule for uh, the summer of 2014 to be completed. This time next year, we'll all be enjoying our new facility. Excellent, sir. Excellent. And our second item is also an update on a facility that we've been working on. Um, the new uh, Legion home, I guess, at uh, St. David's Park is very much uh, nearing completion. It's currently at a 99% completion uh, percentage, and we expect that it will be ready to go within the next couple of weeks to a month or so. Uh, you'll see that the uh, service NL inspection has been completed and the building passed that, uh, that particular inspection, so that part of the, uh, the hurdle has been crossed. And uh, certainly now we're, we're in the process of putting the, the lettering on the building to identify it as the new Legion home. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a nice facility, certainly at uh, near the geographic center of the city of Mount Pearl, uh, and certainly it will give the Legion uh, the prominence it deserves within our community. Absolutely. And that's it for me, Your Worship. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, planning and Land Use, Councillor Aker. Thank you very much, Your Worship. The first item we have uh, from Planning is a referral from the uh, City of St. John's uh, pertaining to the development of a gas bar and a convenience store at the corner of Brookfield uh, Road and Commonwealth Avenue. This is in the City of St. John's, but of course, you know, the area is fairly close to some of our neighboring properties. And I believe in the past, Council um, has committed to some of the neighbors in that area to at least providing a, a public consultation process whereby we could get their commentary uh, at the end of the day so they could have some input into the uh, St. John's decision. Um, the, uh, what we did was we went through a public consultation process. The uh, notices were circulated within a 150 meter radius of this particular project uh, to a number of property owners. I think the number was uh, 64. A uh, briefing session was scheduled on September 3rd. And we had three written submissions and one verbal submission. And I believe, Your Worship, you, you uh, chaired that briefing session for mm -hmm. us, right? Yes, Thank correct. you very much. In attendance were nine people, including uh, two residents and uh, two people from the uh, proponent. Uh, just to highlight, during the uh, briefing session, the concerns raised uh, typically were noise pollution, increased crime, fumes from the gasoline, I guess, that would be stored and sold there, um, general pollution, traffic, uh, safety, litter, and of course, uh, mentioned also was a decrease in the, in the property values. Uh, so that's the first part of the process. Um, the second part is that the proponent has to access the, uh, the city of Mount Pearl streets as well as our water and sewer services in order to connect to, uh, to service this particular proposal. So the reason tonight for tabling uh, all this information is, is twofold. Um, is to table the commentary, uh, which has to do with the resident's concern. And what the committee, as well as the department, are recommending is that in terms of litter, we, uh, we would ask that the proponent provide proper fencing around any garbage containers. In terms of noise, we'd like to see the hours of operation limited from 6 a.m. to midnight. And, of course, in terms of communication, I guess this is what the City of Mount Pearl will do. We'll, when we send the package off to the City of St. John's, we'll basically let these property owners know exactly what we've done on their behalf. At the end of the day, the decision uh, to approve this project is in the hands of St. John's. They have approved it, but only approved it in principle. 
and they are awaiting our commentary now so they can work out the finer details uh, with the proponent. Um, the motion uh, tonight uh, relates to a development permit uh, and some of the conditions we'd like to put in there, of course, are meeting our usual engineering services uh, requirements. We'd like to see a sidewalk along Commonwealth Avenue as well as the Mount Pearl side of Brookfield Road. That'll satisfy some of the safety concerns that came up during the uh, briefing session. Um, and we'd also like to see the requirements met of the Provincial Department of Works and Transportation. Um, in the not so distant future, there will be hookup done here to the new Team Gushu Highway as it uh, relates to both Brookfield Road as well as to uh, Commonwealth Avenue. And that should go a ways uh, to addressing some of the traffic concerns that were brought up by the residents. So uh, the motion, Your Worship, is that we approve the development permit and also we uh, send on the residents' concerns to the City of St. John's, and I so move. It is moved by Councillor <coughs> Aker, seconded by Councillor Ledwell. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Contrary-minded? Motion carried. Thank you. The second item, Your Worship, and in fact the next three items are referrals um, from various municipalities that, uh, that are part of the St. John's urban uh, regional area. Uh, we have one here from the uh, town of Baleen, and that's uh, what they're doing is they're amending the St. John's Regional Plan to accommodate a 22-lot uh, unserviced residential subdivision on the north side of Baleen Road in the town of Baleen. Uh, the department recommends that we advise that we have no, uh, no objections to the proposed amendment. There is no direct effect on the city of Mount Pearl, and I'd like to move that we endorse that. Moved and second. All in favor? Contrary-minded? Carried. Yes, moving right along. The next referral, I believe, is from the Town of Paradise. Town of Paradise, uh, again, a proposed St. John's Regional Plan Amendment, um, and they wish to uh, accommodate a six-lot residential subdivision with on-site services plus a future residential expansion area. And again, the department has the same recommendation. There is no direct impact on the city, and I so move. Move, seconded. All in favor? Contrary-minded? Carried. Yeah. Catching up to you folks. Town of Portion Cove, St. Phillips, again the same uh, type of um, amendment is going through and this is to accommodate a single unserviced residential building lot at the end of Skinner's Road and there will be no direct impact and I still move. Moved. Seconded. All in favor? Country minded. Carried. Now sir, the next one here. The planning report's always the thickest, isn't it? Pearlview Subdivision uh, Development Agreement. Uh, we're tabling uh, this agreement for Phase 6 uh, <coughs> with Council's approval. We'd like the CAO as well as the Mayor to execute this agreement with, uh, I believe it's with Cardinal Holmes, and I so move. Move, seconded. All in favor? Contrary minded. Motion is carried. Item number 6, Your Worship, is we recently had some complaints as it relates to um, some of the streets uh, that access residential neighborhoods from industrial or commercial areas. And it had to do with the tininess and basically the look and feel of uh, some of the back gardens or backyards, I should say, of the, uh, uh, the commercial area. So council undertook a review of the uh, buffering and screening requirements for these commercial and industrial, basically the corner lots that are adjacent to the streets that provide access, like I said, into the residential neighborhoods. And uh, basically we agreed in committee that a change was warranted. We're going to add a new regulation, 6.4.3, and I'll just read it. Where an industrial, commercial, or civic development permitted in any use zone abuts a street that is used as an access into a residential area or zone, a structural barrier or fence may be required by council in the flanking street side yard, and the structure or barrier shall be maintained by the owner or occupier of the property to the satisfaction of council. Uh, we engaged in the public consultation process by advertising on the 21st of September. A briefing session was scheduled for October 8th. We received no feedback. Uh, in council, uh, in committee, we agree that we should move ahead with this amendment. Um, unfortunately, it's not retroactive, but if we ever have any future subdivisions that are adjacent to commercial areas, uh, when the commercial areas go in, I guess the commercial areas would have to come after the, the residential, if you think about it, mm -hmm. uh, this proper screening will be, uh, will be put in place. And generally, from where I sit, I'd like to see any businesses that are currently in this position, I'd love to see them keep their back areas tidy. I'd also like to see them to uh, put up fencing and berms or whatever would be necessary sometimes to hide what is typically benign commercial activity, but is typically also not in keeping with a residential um, type of activity. Um, so I'm sure the department can probably put that on there. Uh, I can't say we'll put it in our regulations, but at least in our mindset for dealing with these types of business owners in the future. 
Uh, and I'd like to move we make that uh, change to our development regulations, Your Worship. Move, seconded. All in favor? <coughs> Contrary minded. Motion carried. In accordance with section, sorry, this is a notice of motion. Yes. In accordance with section 39 of the City of Mount Pearl Act 1988, take notice that in accordance with Council's public notification policy, I will at a regular meeting of Council move an amendment to the text of the Mount Pearl Fence Regulations 2011 that, if enacted, will add a number of clauses that reference requirements and standards for retaining walls. And the purpose of this proposed amendment is to provide Council with the authority to regulate the construction of retaining walls on private property. Mm. Good move. Yep. Uh, routine items now, Your Worship. Please. Development permit list for the period October 7th through the 18th. Uh, development permit number 71, and I so move. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Carried. Uh, residential building permits for October 5th through the 18th of October. And the amount for the period is $178,550. And I may note as well, Your Worship, we have the commercial permits uh, in the amount of $168,450. Not a lot I'll of activity, is it? And I so move. Move, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Motion carried. Okay. Um, two final items. They're both outside the, uh, the kit. I have a paper copy, but I believe they were downloaded to the iPads uh, just before Council's meeting. They were. I have another notice of motion. In accordance with Section 39 of the City of Mount Pearl Act 1988, take notice that in accordance with Council's public notification policy, I will at a regular meeting of Council move an amendment to the Mount Pearl Development Regulations 2010 that, if enacted, will amend Map 1, Land Use Sony Map as follows. Rezone the rear portion of eight proposed lots situated on the north side of the proposed Wilkes Avenue from commercial mix to single dwelling unit RSU 3 u zone. The purpose of this proposed amendment is to have the entire area of the proposed residential lots on the north side of a new subdivision named Street, uh, Street named Wilkes Avenue, entirely within the RSU 3 zone to permit the residential development of these lots. And the final item of worship, we're back to another referral, a late one that came in today is a referral from the town of Bay Bulls, and again as it relates to the St. John's Regional uh, Plan. They're moving an amendment um, that would basically bring the um, the St. John's St. John's Urban Regional Plan map into conformity with existing urban development in the town of Bay Bulls. The city of Mount Pearl sees no reason why we would object, and I so move. Move, seconded. All in favor? Right. Contrary it, minded. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, we are up to new business. Uh, Councillor Walsh. Thank you, Your Worship. You're full of surprises. I'll uh, start with the uh, the water levels at Babel's Big Pond. Well, I went back and forth last time. Yeah, no, that's good. That's oh, excellent. I, I like it. I like surprises. Um, the uh, the current uh, water level, Your Worship, uh, is at 29 feet, which means little or nothing to most people. But I will tell you this, that despite the heavy rains that we've had in the last two or three weeks, we're still two feet below where we were just a couple of years ago. So uh, I guess the the word again is 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 caution and uh, to continue to apply the the water conservation order which is an ongoing thing pond levels need to be uh, at this time of the year it would be great if we get them into the 30 feet uh, range um, so 29 feet while it's not worrisome it's still uh, despite the heavy rain not where we'd like for it to be uh, I believe uh, Mr. Randall all of the uh, bulk garbage collection is now completed correct uh, as part of that of course we sometimes have to sift through different uh, types of garbage uh, and deal with that uh, and uh, on occasion a very rare occasion now do we ever have to um, leave things but sometimes people think when we're leaving metals that we're actually leaving it when we actually go back and, mm -hmm. and collect them uh, later on in the week but uh, it's a, a good opportunity this time of the year to mention uh, two things number one uh, the the leaves of course this time of the year the leaves are falling from the trees and uh, with the containers in particular, if you have a couple of large bags uh, filled with leaves and you put them in a container, uh, all of a sudden the container gets fairly full and some of the residential household garbage may not actually fit. So what we do uh, in the spring and again in the fall, but particularly in the fall when the, the leaves fall from the trees, 
we try to implement um, a system whereby we have the pickups uh, make a run through the garbage zone areas uh, following collection and any leaves or grass clip, uh, clippings for that matter that are in clear plastic bags uh, will collect them. Uh, so it's just an added service uh, to keep them out of the bins uh, and if it's in a clear plastic bag we'll get them. Um, again, try to refrain from using any other uh, tight bag other than the clear plastic so we can actually see what's there. The second thing uh, is um, we occasionally get questions and calls at the depot regarding tires and uh, what do we do we have tires uh, and again this type this con t sorry this time of the year uh, when people are installing their winter tires the summer tires may uh, be fit only for the garbage uh, unless they're good enough to use again next year but if they are to be disposed of just put them at the curb uh, as part of your regular garbage collection and we'll actually take them on that day but again it won't be taken with the carts a truck will come by later and collect the uh, the tires so those two things the the, the leaves uh, and the tires uh, just have them at the curb leaves in a plain uh, clear plastic bag which you can buy at most uh, retail locations. The only other thing I want to mention and it's a little bit of a, a kudos to our staff and community services. Today I was talking to Blair Tilly. Um, I've been dealing with some of the residents in Goldeneye and uh, Har Harlequin uh, on a neighborhood watch. Uh, my friend and many of you know him, uh, Wayne Evans actually initiated this, uh, uh, this uh, neighborhood watch thing uh, at the end of August, early September. Uh, I actually dropped along some of the flyers in the mailboxes uh, for residents of the area with him uh, sometime in September uh, as well. Uh, we, we are now in the process of actually doing some work with the Neighborhood Watch and I know Danielle Gravett, one of our municipal enforcement officers, is actually now trained in the program that's delivered uh, to uh, you know community organizations or neighborhoods is a great program that's been around for a long time uh, there have been some revisions changes uh, improvements to the to the program but I, I just want to extend uh, a word of congratulations and thanks to Wayne Evans in particular who's uh, you know assumed uh, the, the task of coordinating this and also thank uh, Blair and uh, Danielle because I think in the next week or so we're going to have that uh, program finally up and running it's uh, you know, when residents are interested in a program like this, and there have been some break-ins in the area of, uh, I think, Goldeneye in particular, be in the green belt area behind some of the homes there, there is a, an elevated uh, level of concern. And, of course, when they ask for a, a program like Neighborhood Watch, they'd like to see it implemented sort of yesterday. So uh, I, I really am thankful to Blair and look forward to the implementation of that program uh, within the next week or two. And if there are other areas in the city that might have those programs or might need those programs or might have a, a group of residents interested, all you really need is a catalyst, someone who's willing to come forward and sort of be an organizer and be part of the Neighborhood Watch uh, team. Uh, in the area of Harlequin and Goldeneye, they had uh, probably 15 or 20 people come forward and said, yes, count me in. I'll be interested in participating in that. And that's a tremendous uptake uh, on that as well. So I uh, just wanted to mention that and thank staff. And if you'd pass that on, Jason, I'd be very, very appreciative of that. Thanks very much. Question here, thank you, sir. Deputy, Deputy Mayor. Just wondering, Councillor Walsh, is, is that the first neighborhood that's taken this on? Uh, the Neighborhood Watch program has actually been in effect in Mount Pearl before, yeah. but many years ago. But I, I sort of get the understanding that it has, has sort of died off, and I think it's been re resurrected as part of some other programming through the RNC. Uh, it is important to note that as much as our own municipal enforcement people will be doing it, it is a program that's run in conjunction with the uh, RNC right. uh, and some of the program that they do. Uh, but I, I think. What's noteworthy is the fact that we have our own municipal enforcement officer who's trained in the delivery of that and, and can meet with a group of interested residents and go through the, the do's and don'ts and, and actually train people. Um, there might be a small cost for council in terms of uh, preparation or cost of pamphlets and signage and that sort of thing. So I think it's, it's really the recycling of a, an old program, mm. uh, but with a, a renewed energy and, and a resurgence and uh, maybe some changes and revisions as well. That's my understanding. Okay. I do know last summer they had a session up at the Kenmount Community Center and the RNC was up there. And at the time, uh, Mr. Collins, we, we suggested that we might uh, either put it on our website to let our residents know or to put it in one of the mail outs uh, to all of our residents to let them know all about the community. Say it again. 
with the tax bills. That's, that, that was an idea that was raised, so I just want to raise it here again because, to Councillor Walter's point, it's a great initiative. Uh, it's been very successful in other locations, and uh, I know we did have a number of residents at that meeting at the uh, Ken Mount Community Centre. Uh, they were um, willing to undertake it, but to your point, Councillor Walter, it's got to be a buy-in by the residents of the particular neighbourhood, and we just need a catalyst, as you said, uh, with our friend Mr. Evans, to take that on. And I just want to let folks know that if it's not on our website, I think uh, we indicated that we were going to put a little link up to us to the, uh, the details of that and how people could go about to start one of those. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor Redwell. Thank you, Your Worship. I uh, just want to take a quick second to uh, wish Councillor Stoyles and her husband well. Uh, certainly uh, very glad to hear that uh, she's doing well and on the men. And uh, as uh, you do, I think she'll certainly be back with us quicker than, uh, than most. So that's great to hear she's doing very well. Uh, I just want to make a mention of a uh, concern I've been dealing with uh, with some residents on Tweedsmuir Place. Um, the first three street lights on Tweedsmuir Place have been out at various points in the past uh, couple of months. I know that one resident alerted me to the fact uh, in July uh, they, we did alert Newfoundland Power, they were fixed. Uh, most recently we've had another couple of residents alert us to the fact that once again the same lights are out. And of course, when they are out, it uh, does make for a very dark environment over there, not very safe. Uh, just want to let uh, residents in the area know that uh, we have gone and gotten in touch with Newfoundland Power through engineering services staff. Uh, they've had a look at it. Uh, they've been able to determine that it's a, a, an underground wiring issue. Uh, there's no time frame right now on the repair, but certainly uh, it's on their radar and they are working on it. So I just wanted to let people know that, that uh, certainly a, a fix is on the way because uh, we certainly uh, don't want our neighborhoods dark like that uh, at any point uh, with the, uh, the, the evenings getting shorter. Um, so that's just an FYI for residents. And the last thing I wanted to mention, uh, just a word of congratulations to the Mount Pearl Paradise Chamber of Commerce. I know that most of the council attended the Best in Business Awards last week and uh, certainly a very good event, a very nice uh, evening. Uh, congratulations to all the winners. Uh, of course, our business community rem remain, uh, remains ever vibrant and ever community-oriented, so certainly good to see a lot of good community-oriented and successful businesses uh, receiving recognition on that night. So congratulations to everybody involved. That's thank you, me. sir. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I uh, just had one question before I start to, to Councillor Walsh's uh, report earlier on the water levels. Just wondering about your, your regional water committee. Uh, I'm sure it has, but I'm just wondering if there's any level of detail about the impact that this uh, Glencrest development is going to have on the regional water. You know, has that, is that on the radar? Has it come up in discussions? Uh, because I know that, you know, again, several residents have asked about that. What's going to be the impact on this potentially huge development on our water supply? Um, we haven't had an opportunity to get into a detailed analysis. Staff probably do have more information than I'm able to provide for you right now. Uh, but obviously uh, the consideration of water, water levels, uh, you know, wastewater, all of those kinds of things uh, are part of the overall discussions, mm -hmm. uh, particularly a development of that size. I think the, uh, upon completion, that's a very significant size development, which includes both uh, commercial industrial areas as well as uh, some, you know, large residential. So uh, other than to say that you know that it will have uh, huge an incredible impact, impact uh, on, on water supplies, and it may probably contribute to expediting you know, us looking at other sources of water. We were hoping that for probably as long as 20, 25 years out, we would not have to access other water supplies. Uh, but there are uh, secondary supplies available uh, for us to use beyond Babel's Big Pond. And of course, as you know, uh, Petty Harbor is now on, on stream, but it's for use only for the west end of, of St. John's. It's not part of the regional water supply. Uh, I will, uh, Deputy Mayor, bring that concern to our next regional water meeting. We'll be meeting within the next two or three weeks because, of course, we have to prepare the budgets right. uh, for the upcoming year as well. And I'll, I'll, I'll raise the, the question there. Uh, and if I'm able to attain any other information about that Glencrest development and, and the demands that that will place on the water supply, I'll pass those along to you before I that. Appreciate well. it. We have, uh, we have had you. a request, Deputy Mayor, uh, uh, from the pro proponents of the Glencrest development to meet with the city. Right. And I would imagine that that would be one of the items on the agenda we would talk with them about uh, when that meeting goes forward. I don't think it's scheduled. I believe one day next week, I think, isn't it? Yeah. That's supposed to happen. It was scheduled, but then I think it had to get yeah, bumped. Yeah, I think yep. it got postponed. Right so 
that matter will come up at that time. Okay, I'm thank sure. you. Thank yeah. you, Councillor Walsh. Uh, another item, Your Worship, has to do with the uh, Glacier parking lot <coughs> up there. It looks fantastic. The new parking lot and the line painting is completed. Um, just had a um, discussion with a couple of the users of the facility up there, and they highlighted the way the lines have been painted sort of on the back of the glacier between, you know, the new glacier, shall we say, and our new uh, swimming pool. And the way um, the lines have been painted, they're sort of horizontal with the curb, which is sort of, sorry, yeah, horizontal with the curb, which is cut down on the number of parking spaces. So I, th I said I would raise this tonight, throw it back to committee, to see um, one suggestion was perhaps make it a one-way route around the, the glacier, and that would allow for more parking. You wouldn't need as wide a roadway, um, and then that way people could come and, you know, drop and go and sort of scoot up around. So I'll, I'll toss that back to our uh, engineering committee. Mm, I, I committed that I would bring that forth. Yeah. And they, they noticed that there was a, you know, a market <coughs> reduction in the number of parking spaces now that the lines had been uh, oriented the way they had been. Um, another item, Your Worship, has to do with, um, again, several people mentioned this to me. Of course, as we know, we said this before, that uh, during the election campaign, for me and speaking with fellow colleagues here, uh, one of the key issues, if not the main issue for me that was raised, was the level of speeding in the city of Mount Pearl. Mm -hmm. And I uh, just wanted to throw it out there to our residents that we do uh, uh, plan to have our strategic planning session in the near future, uh, where we chart our course for the next four years as a council. And certainly one of the, one of the key issues during that meeting will indeed be uh, with speeding and how we, uh, how we address that. But one in particular, and I got this from a couple of different people, which I found a little disturbing. I think I, I, think I may have raised this some years back. The crosswalk down there um, on Park Avenue, where the, the T-Railway cuts across down there by, by Park Place, um, so two, two residents on one occasion stopped to let the pedestrians go across. They were sort of heading uh, west on, on Park Avenue. And the person behind them bolted it out around them to the right, like past them, to the point where the people who had stopped for the pedestrians had to lace the horn. And in one case, they went right on through, and it was a near miss. And the other case, they actually stopped. So, you know, this, this speed, this impatience that our drivers have, I mean, that's, uh, that's something you just don't do at a crosswalk, you know. And they asked if I would, knowing that this was a, a televised meeting, they asked if I would, you know, take the, the time to mention that publicly, and I agreed to, that at crosswalks you're supposed to stop and let the pedestrians cross. And for heaven's sake, don't be passing or scooting around people, you know, who are indeed stopped at a crosswalk. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely stop for a reason. So I, I just wanted to throw that out there. And again, to ensure all the residents that raised, that it raised the issue of speeding that we did, you know, we have uh, taken note and we will have a look at that and look at some of the, um, some of the strategies to reduce that. Um, I, I, too, wanted to throw out a... Well wish to Lucy, Councillor Soils, and of course Reg and their family, and I look forward to working with her as soon as she gets back. And I'll also like to throw out congratulations to our two MHAs, uh, Mr. Kent, who's now Min Minister of Municipal Affairs, and uh, uh, Paul Lane, of course, who's Parliamentary Secretary for some department with too many words for me to remember. So uh, kudos. Uh, innovation, trade, rural development, isn't it? Innovation, yeah. business. Yeah. So the potpourri of, of government affairs. So congratulations to our two MHAs. I just wanted to acknowledge that here as well. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor Tessier. Okay. Um, to the Deputy Mayor's point about traffic, I mean, we see it all the time. I saw two incidents yesterday within our boundaries that were more than a little upsetting. Uh, and these are people problems. These are not things that, you know, the council can get together and implement uh, something into the infrastructure that's going to make people, that's going to prevent them from doing things like that. Uh, this, is, this is an education piece because uh, clearly if people are still cruising past cars that are stopped on crosswalks, that's a problem. That's, that's a people problem, and that's definitely something that we need to, that we need to tackle. Uh, to that effect, Halloween is in a week's time. Uh, it's really important that this speeding traffic is very cognizant that small children are going to be out. They're going to be out early in the evening or they're going to be out until well after dark. I know that when I was campaigning, I talked to a person on Michener Avenue and he called it the Michener 400. And he said that's how it's known as the Michener 400. That's really unsettling when you look at it, especially as such a densely populated residential area. And that is but one residential area in our city. So Halloween is next week. It is imperative that and all the time to be cognizant of the children, but especially then because they're going to have their masks on, vision is going to be obstructed, they're going to be excited. Uh, very, very important for all motorists to uh, always put the children first and foremost. 
Um, we're entering into uh, hurricane season. I just saw an advisory on the weather for Thursday. We talked about bulk garbage. If you don't want your lawn furniture to be bulk garbage in the spring, by all means, please put it away because it's going to get windy. And I know from experience as well, uh, if you have your trees, if they're around wires that feed into your home or wires at all, uh, this is definitely a good time to be preventative, uh, to call. I think it's uh, Newfoundland Power comes in and takes care of that. We actually had wires pulled off our house last year during uh, a wind a wind storm. So uh, if somebody uh, has that risk, if that risk is running on their property, this is the, definitely the time to address it. Uh, I too want to congratulate the Mount Pearl Paradise uh, Chamber of Commerce for their very successful Best in Business again. That's a lovely little marriage uh, and it's uh, it seems to be going well. And I want to congratulate our MHAs as well. Steve Kent, Minister of Municipal and Intergovernmental Affairs. Uh, Paul Lane, of course, is the Parliamentary Secret Secretary for the Minister of Innovation, Business and Rural Development, which is Minister Charlene Johnson. And Paul Davis uh, actually has a new portfolio now. He's Child Youth and Family Services. So I know that uh, all three HMAs, MHAs are going to do just a stellar job in their new I want to see. I want to see a picture of Minister Charlene Johnson <coughs> with Paul Lane. her Parliamentary Secretary. <laughs> yes. Yes. Look up. Weird. Yes. I just, you know, you know, you, you you will get, you know, they used to the joke when Paul was here that him and I represented both the long and the short of every issue. Oh gosh. So I would imagine that the same thing will happen there, won't it? It's Quite like, frankly, I'm I'm sure it my will. My God, does I'm she sure get to his? She at his elbow? She's I mean, she's wee. She's very I mean, she's very little. Charlie's, she's petite. Yeah. She's a petite woman. All right. But somebody's got to get us to picture. Very tall, very big in stature. Very, we got to get small the picture. in stature, but very big in, in personality. There's no doubt about that. Oh, yes, for and sure. And as well, best wishes to Lucy and Reg. Uh, you know, as everybody knows, my family was there earlier this year as well. Never a fun experience. No. So I'm so glad they're out of the hospital at least and recovering at home. Uh, and I'm sure uh, knowing Lucy and her very clear... Uh, popularity in this uh, city she's going to be well taken care of and I'm sure we'll all play a role in that as well ourselves so best wishes to her and her family thank you Councillor Raker yes thank you your worship yeah and further to that point uh, Councillor Tessier um, Lucy's a very strong person she's been through a lot when it comes to traffic accidents in the family yeah. Uh, we wish her and Reg uh, all the best, and I suspect uh, long before the four to six weeks will be out, she'll be working from home, and then back in the saddle here. Oh, oh yeah, I, I so have we no wish doubt. Both of them well, <laughs> both of them well. Um, and further to the deputy mayor's point about the speeding, you know, we have to start thinking. I suspect, and we'll do this in our strategic planning process. We have to start considering novel ways of, uh, of perhaps handling speeding. But in the example that you mentioned, what some jurisdictions do is they'll actually narrow the street in the area of the crosswalk. So thereby creating a curb or a sidewalk barrier that prevents people from basically two-laning it right. going through the intersection, right? I mean, so those are some of the things I guess we've got to start putting on the table uh, going forward. I heard it too during the door-to-door, -door, uh, just up from Michener there on Donovan Street, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of speeding, as well as other neighborhoods. Not going to mention every single street, but I'm sure between us all, we can count on our on, you know, on more than two or three hands, and we'll probably cover off about, you know, a very large percentage of the streets in Mount Pearl are experiencing it. Um, community news. Uh, on Saturday past, Councillor Ledwell and I attended a show or a display put off by Admiralty House. It was called For King and Empire. Really well done. It, it was an interactive uh, display, basically, of what the Royal Newfoundland Regiment went through during the First World War in terms of recruitment and training. There was actually a display with guns. The RNC were informed before it ended, before the shots were all fired. And I heard from, I guess through social media, several people when we posted that we'd been there, they said they wished they had known. Now for the benefit of the public, uh, this was a bit of a trial run for Admiralty House. I think they would like to take this and see <coughs> the schools involved in the general public, but I thought they put it off really well. Uh, it would be nice down the road to advertise. I'd ask Director Collins if you could just pass on our compliments to the folks at Admiralty House and encourage them to publicize these type of events uh, uh, as much as they can in the future. I think you'll get more than, I think we had about a dozen people there. I think the potential's there to have more and uh, it really displays the, uh, the museum, which is the centerpiece of, centerpiece of that part of Mount Pearl. Uh, I want to make note too uh, about the H.J. Bartley Blades. Season openers coming up on November 1st. I think they have an announcement coming today via perhaps Steel Communications. Wasn't sure about that. But I thought we'd take the opportunity to welcome the uh, CBNC Beast of Town. 
at the glacier on November 1st of 2013, um, the team is only going to thrive if they get the attendance. They're going to need about six or 700 people, I think, to show up for a game uh, to break even. Any, anything above that's a bit of gravy. They've recruited some new players. They have some players back. They've traded for some players. And of course, like every other team, they're going to be importing a few. So it should be a very good brand of hockey. But they've all realized, and I think we do too as a council, they can't survive in this city unless they get the support of the fans who come up and will pay for the tickets and perhaps have a, a drink or a popcorn with the hockey moms and the hockey dads up at the glacier. Uh, by all of us working together, we can support the Blades, and November 1st is the home opener. It is very good hockey. Yeah. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, sir, very much. Uh, that concludes new business. On that note, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Ledwell. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.